will take photographs of the meeting. You are permitted to do so without causing disturbance to the meeting's proceedings. A designated area has been set out to allow you to do this. Please be aware that you are not permitted to move outside the designated area as this may disrupt the meeting. A protocol which governs the activity has been placed on the table for your information. Members of the public present at this meeting should also be aware that they may be recorded. Having done the, that bit of it, can I introduce our two guests this evening. On my left is Sir Clive Loder, who is the Police and Crime Commissioner and has just about celebrated his second birthday in that position. Um, on my right is the Chief Constable, Simon Cole, um, who has been with the force since 2010. 2010. Um, what we'll do is a very quick introduction from Officer Clive, followed by one by um, Simon, <coughs> and then the main part of the evening is for these two gentlemen to answer your questions. Thanks, Roger. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Clive Lewis, I'm your Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, <laughs> This job wasn't terribly well sold, I think most people would agree, by the, uh, the government at large to the people at large. So let me just very quickly, in big handfuls, describe my job. I have sort of five major roles. One is, yes, to hire and fire chief constables. It's there in the legislation. Uh, a, a sanction to be used judiciously, legally, carefully, humanely. And by the way, it isn't about to happen. And just for the sake of completeness, so you all know in this room, I've just uh, increased Simon's um, contract for another three years. Uh, starting from June next year, which is a sign of the level of trust that I have in him and the way that increasingly we're working very well together. That's one thing. Secondly, I write a peace and crime plan. Some people I know in this room have read it, but I suspect many won't. This is not my plan, it's yours. Between becoming a candidate for this job and being elected in November 2012, I listen not to tens or hundreds, but to thousands of people. And not being an ex-copper, what I heard initially was all new to me. It's about people's concerns, expectations, aspirations, and so on. By the end of that period, just before the election, very little that I heard was new. But some things I've heard again and again and again. And there's a clue. Those are the things that formed the kernel, as it were, of a peace and crime plan, which as much as I can, it captures those things that people expect their police to do for them. The police serve us. So I write the plan. I set the precept, the local tax that is paid, just so you know, your police force costs about £171 million pounds a year to run at the moment. It was, by the way, 194 only three or four years ago, <coughs> down to 171. By the way, that reduction has happened while crime has kept coming down. The bad news is we've got another £15.4 million pounds to find between now and the back end of financial year 16-17. Out of that 171 coming down, about 120 comes from central government and about 50 from you. And I make choices about how big that 50 is going to be. All right? I have to assure an effective and efficient police force by law. That's my job. Effective means delivering this. And efficient means living within the realities of the budget about which I've just spoken. And lastly, I'm required to make sure that I listen to you by law. I have to listen and make sure that this continues to be a reflection of what the people want the police force to do for them. Two other things, if I may, very quickly, and it's this. One is, I am a police and crime commissioner, and the commissioning part of my job is by far the most uh, rewarding in the sense of the things that I need to do in order to help the plan be delivered. I commission outcomes in support of the delivery of the plan. I have about 3.4 to 4.3 million pounds a year to spend on commissioning things that will help bring down crime, or more particularly, reduce the load on Simon and the force in the years to come. And key amongst those sorts of things are getting at re-offending and youth offending. So a lot of things I do are about early interventions with troubled families, with youngsters who are starting to go off the rails, with providing peer mentoring for offenders and re-offenders, and so on. So that's commissioning. I won't talk any more about that now. One last thing, just for the sake of completeness, I am not allowed to have anything to do with operational policing decisions. The plan, as it were, sits like this. And underneath the police and crime plan, the Chief Constable Simon writes a series of what are called control orders. They define and decide how many safer neighbourhood teams there are, how many roads police units, response units, CID, forensics, child abuse investigation units, rape investigation units, and so on, that make up the panoply of complex police and staff activity that delivers the plan. At that, I'll shut up and hand over to the Chief. 
and I'm sure we'll get to more questions. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Clive. Um, there's a two-minute video. There's about then seven or eight slides from me just to put some context, and I'm really happy to take questions and have a discussion. And my glamorous assistant's going to <laughs> hopefully make this work. <clears throat> explain uh, that to you. Uh, that's a bit of the context. This is a bit of the context as well. It says an average day. I don't think there's ever an average day. It's a typical day. It's interesting. There's a few of the councillors have just heard this once, so you have to check me against delivery and see if I say the same. You can hold me to it. That's a typical day in the life of the force across Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland. Um, you can see there the kind of totality of what we do down at the bottom. <coughs> Half a million phone calls a year, 101 non emergency, 120,000 999 calls. Uh, it's the data here that I always find fascinating. On a typical day, we refer more children that we think are at risk than we make arrests. Uh, and I think a lot of people will think that might be the other way around. Road traffic collisions. Yeah, today the M1's been shut for a huge chunk of the day because we've been dealing with a road traffic collision and the sad statistic is the most likely cause of death that we will deal with in Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland is, is road traffic accidents. There's more road traffic accident fatalities than there are murders in any given year. Typical year, about a dozen murders, most of them in domestic situations. <laughs> and so that's a day in the life of... And that's a day in the life of Rutland. Um, so you can see on a typical day, five 999 calls, 13 non emergency calls. Um, you know, what do some of those numbers mean? In a typical day, we'll have three crimes reported. There won't be any robberies. It says that we don't detect any crimes. But obviously, we do detect. We detect about a quarter of crimes. So kind of every fourth, every fourth crime is, is detected. Um, you know, as many missing people as there are burglaries. And road traffic collisions, a number that's changed quite significantly actually, we alluded to it earlier didn't we, with, with Roger Beggy. The first time that we met, we talked about road death and particularly young people on rural roads and said we'd do some work around that. So, you know, that's a typical day. The challenge for me, and Clive's just talked about his responsibilities, is back in 2010 when I arrived, and I've spoken in this room before to some of you, um, I had £192 million. Pounds. In 2014, I've got £172 million, and in 2017, I'm going to have £156 million. So, a significant change in the budget. 
At the end of the last meeting, I've been accused of a number of things, some of which I think are technically a public order offence, but uh, that means there's still a lot of money to spend on providing policing. It just isn't as much as there used to be, hence there needs to be changed. Aid. Recorded crime has just about halved across the last decade. Burglary has pretty much halved. You are less likely to be a victim of a recorded crime than you were a decade ago. It's deliberately done by population because the population is growing by 10%. And the population of the city by 17%. So, you know, there is a growth in the people we're dealing with. Burglary is interesting. There's now 400,000 houses in the false area. There used to be 300 and something. So, big change. What isn't in that? Some frauds, because they're dealt with nationally now through action fraud. What isn't in that? Cybercrime. <coughs> Phishing emails. That email you get from your friend that says they've been mugged in St. Petersburg and you've got to send them £400 immediately. <coughs> and you think, well, I was in the pub with them last night. They can't have got to St. Petersburg in that time. Those kind of issues uh, are not captured in that data. What have we been doing? Project Edison is our change programme. Uh, we've had a change programme that's been ongoing for quite a while. Um, so I've just realised, keep walking in front of your camera, you've got a nice shot of my shutter, <coughs> haven't you? It's, it's probably not, not what you're looking like. No, it's, it's, it's angled up. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go, you've got the, the change programme. And you can see there what we've done is look at every beat in the force area, look at the volume of calls, look at the risk, look at the safeguarding issues, so where we're looking at children and adults who we think are vulnerable and the actions we've had to take. And well, could you just read up the red bit? Yeah, I'm good. no good at that. I'm red, green, colour blind. That's Uppingham, sorry, it's Uppingham which is low and Harbour North which is medium. No, sorry about that. I, I got refused as an applicant as a PC by this force because I'm red, green, colour blind. And I've now got a slide that I can't read because <laughs> I'm a combination of red, green, colour blind and very vocal. So, one in nine men. One in nine men. That's better. Uh, so, Uppingham Low and Harbour North Medium. So, the challenge for me is to keep it that way. Yeah, that is the challenge. This is, I hope, an important slide. As we currently are, we are lined up differently to this. This is the model we will move to in the early part of February next year. And it's a model that's designed to cope with the fact that by 2017, we've got to have 300 less police officers to make the books balance. Why police officers? Well, currently as a force, we are disproportionately cop rich. So our percentage of cops to our percentage of staff is very high, partly because we've pushed a focus on neighbourhoods, partly because our back office functions are quite lean, and partly because we've got cops doing things that you don't need police powers to do, on which the law now lets me authorise. And the best example of that is interviewing people. Interviewing in a police station, you do not need a warrant card to do. If I believe you are trained and accredited to an adequate level, I can sign you off as an accredited interviewer. So we're looking at our staffing mix. So what will happen if you're a caller, as a member of the public, your call will come into contact management. That might be 999, it might be 101, uh, the non-emergency number. And if it needs dispatching, if we need to be there within 15 minutes or an hour, it will go to our patrol and resolution team and they will respond and they will be out and about. They will be the nearest resource to the job. They may have started their duties at Keyham Lane, they may have started their duties at Melton, they'll be deployed so they're in an optimum place to respond. If someone makes an arrest, goes into custody, the force investigation team will deal with the prisoner. Now at the moment, your neighbourhood teams are spending about half their time on the ground here and the other half doing other things, which might be dealing with prisoners, which might be doing crime inquiries. And I want them to be out and about and visible, which seemed to be the cry of the previous meeting. I want them solving problems. I want you to know who they are. I want you to trust them. Um, and that's important. 
So the patrol and resolution team, they make a rest, they'll do a handover package, and then we'll be off, and they'll be back out patrolling. The managed appointment team, at the moment we have a couple of officers typically on a day who do diary appointments and try and deal with things that we couldn't deal with or didn't, or didn't choose with the victim to deal with, to be fair, on, at the time. That team is going to grow and actually if you don't need an urgent response, we're going to be saying, does 11 o'clock suit you? And if you say yes, then we'll be there at 11 o'clock. At the moment, we say yes, we'll be there at 11 o'clock and we make about three quarters of them. The neighbourhood team, I'll just, I will come on to a bit more, but the neighbourhood team will have less cops in it. The neighbourhood team will have about the same number of PCSOs in it. We're going to have 251 PCSOs across the force, which is actually an increase, which was linked to the precept increase of, uh, of last year that Supply put in place. And the investigation unit, they will deal with all crime investigations, all the prisoners and all the follow-up. The little bubble at the bottom that doesn't have a sexy picture in it is really important too because the nature of these discussions tends to be about response and neighbourhood but behind them there are specialist investigators and Sir Clive's already mentioned rape investigation, child sexual abuse investigation, safeguarding, that whole piece around safeguarding and child abuse, serious crime, major crime. If there's a murder it will be dealt with by a regionally shared major crime team who will be deployed wherever the murders are. And they've been like that for about three years now. We've been investigating our murders with shared resources. And serious organised crime are the people who try and get upstream. They try and identify the people who are behind the criminal operations you maybe see occasionally. They are and try and get into them and seize their assets and follow evidence chains and get at the big people that organise this stuff rather than pick off the people who are selling the drugs on the street. <coughs> we shouldn't be sight of them because they're all available to be deployed and they will be here if they are needed here. It's a very busy slide. I'm really happy, and this is, there's nothing in this that's his secret. I'll probably put it on the council's website or something, whatever best suits. Um, but that just describes who will be doing what in the new world. Other things we've been doing, we're really looking at our demand. What is our demand? I've already said we refer more children for support in an average day than we make arrests. 1% of the geography of the force accounts for a third of the demand. And we were at Colville the other evening, and one of those areas is the centre of Colville, and another is the centre of Harborough. There's a bit of Melton as well. There isn't a bit of Rutland. Friday night I was on foot patrol in one of the areas in the city, and we patrol the antisocial behaviour hotspots and some burglary hotspots because it's a criminologist called COPA, for those keen students of criminology, COPA says the COPA curve, 15 minutes high visibility patrol has a displacement effect of two hours. So we are monitoring on computer that 15 minutes, do we put it in there, what happens in the two hours afterwards, does it cause um, displacement and the like. So really focusing on demand. In a typical month we have 900 calls to the force about concerns for welfare. I haven't seen Mr. Blogs for three, for three days, I'm a bit worried. Huge sort of workloads, how can we deal with those things differently and better? How do other agencies contribute? And all the agencies actually, we all generate a bit of call for each other. We call ambulances maybe more than we need them. Uh, other agencies ask us to do checks, perhaps more than we need them. Now this is quite a busy slide. Uh, as we currently are, we have 50 local policing areas in Lou Cordner over in the corner there, hiding in the corner. Um, and who will get any difficult questions um, is an LPU commander with sole responsibility for the geography of Rutland. <coughs> In the new world we're going to have eight local policing areas and you can see down the side a big geographic area which covers Melton Harbour and Rutland which will be the responsibility of an inspector and the expectation is that that inspector will own the neighbourhood teams ensure visibility, ensure we know who partners are, ensure problem solving. And also make sure that they're out and about, because at the moment they're visible about half the time they're at work. I don't want them sucked into dealing with prisoners and complex inquiries. I want them out and about dealing with local people and local issues. It is a busy slide, for which I slightly apologise, but we couldn't think of a better way. What we try to do is look at workload, look at what drives that workload. We're doing some things differently. 
We've been completely coterminous as a force with local council boundaries. This bit here isn't going to be, because all our, all our analysis of that bottom bit of the city where you meet the race course is that the crime patterns and call patterns there cut across that boundary. So we're going to react to where the issues are and brigade them differently. On your neighbourhood teams, there will be fewer police officers but they hopefully will be here more of the time. And we've done endless analysis and we've worked with KPMG to do time and motion studies, as probably my grandfather would have, would have said, um, with his background in industry, uh, to look at, well, what are people doing? How are they doing it? So there will be fewer police officers, but I believe, actually, if you look at the coverage in terms of time that they provide, it'll be at least the same and probably better and as I've said to the councillors in the sort of meeting we've had to respect their democratic accountabilities, actually our response times to this area of the force at the moment are the worst in the force by quite a big chunk. And so we would hope to improve those through this new setup. The neighbourhood priority teams that it talks about there, NPTs, um, will fade out over the next two years because of losing the officers, but we will keep them as long as we can and make sure they're active as long as they can be and positively impacting and getting upstream of issues. Last, well, one but last slide. <coughs> Our response teams, we're going to have less people on them because at the moment they do grade ones, grade twos, grade threes, deal with prisoners, do constant watches in the cell block, do scene guards at incidents. We're just going to ask them to do grade ones and grade two. Jobs, so emergency jobs, jobs we need to get to within an hour and will be, they will start their days at those locations along the bottom. So for here, Keyham and Melton, and Keyham's I think nearest in mileage terms, Melton's the other place, but the intention isn't that they then sit in the police station and wait for something to happen. The intention is that they get out and about, they're visible in hot spots, they're there on arterial routes. Previous meeting I was got told we never ever patrol. Well, if we never ever patrol, there was somebody driving one of my police cars to Oakham earlier. They look to me like they're on patrol, but hey. Um, so, a big change and a really important thing at the top. 24-7 there will be a chief inspector whose job is to put resource to where the problems are. And that means <coughs> problems in the widest sense. Um, and on the video, one of the first people you saw is one of our rape investigators. Actually, there are some days when we come on at weekends when that is where there is a lot of work. And typically, I would stress, those are not stranger offences, those are offences involving people known to each other. If that's where the resource is needed, we need to put that resource there. And that's really important. So, kind of summing up, we need to change. We can't sustain the model we currently have. I got accused <coughs> in the last meeting of sort of bemoaning what we haven't got. Well, what we have got is £172 million pounds to spend on policing, which we do in partnership, and we do lots of work with authorities, and this is one of those authorities um, who have shared legal responsibilities, so community safety partnerships and the like. And at the moment, we have £172 million pounds to do that. By 2017, we will have £156 million pounds to do that. And my job is to keep doing it and maximise every one of those pounds to keep people safer. And I speak as a taxpayer, actually. I'm rather keen that money is spent wisely because I pay tax too. It would seem unfortunate if I didn't. Really happy to take questions, you know, both Sir Clive and I, if there is